Today on This Week in Iowa, 100 days away from the caucuses, here from the IDP chair. Then she's the perceived frontrunner in Iowa, a chat with Senator Elizabeth Warren. Plus, Pat Grassley takes over as Speaker of the House of Iowa and later, his last year at the helm of the World Food Prize. Hi everyone and thank you so much for joining us here on This Week in Iowa. I'm Sabrina Ahmed and we are starting off our show on the couch with Troy Price as we are about 100 days away from the caucuses. Troy, thank you for joining us. Well, it's great to be back. Okay, so tell us, what's the status of the caucuses? How are you feeling as we are so close now? <laughs> uh, I feel actually really good. I feel good. We have over 95% of our caucus locations are locked. In fact, uh, just this week, uh, we locked in. Uh, we're at full. Uh, all 100% of our sites in the 4th District are locked. Uh, we've got thousands of people coming, or hundreds of people going through our training pipeline uh, right now. And so we feel really good about where we are. We're ahead of schedule from where we've been in some previous years. And, uh, you know, we've been working diligently since, you know, the last general election to make sure we're prepared for this caucuses and we feel really good about where we are. There have been some ups and downs of course with the virtual <laughs> caucus being rejected and yep. then now this new satellite caucus. So how mm -hmm. do you really feel that's all gone and how do you feel the perception is? You know I think uh, one I feel like we've gotten to a good spot. You know obviously like a lot of Iowa Democrats we were exceptionally disappointed when the virtual caucus uh, was rejected. But I will say this that Iowans, uh, uh, Iowans are ready for these caucuses. And everywhere I go, I'm running into people, I'm running into new people who've never caucused before, who are asking me how to get involved and how to get ready. So I think, you know, even though we had a few bumps in the road, I think people are ready to uh, go out there and fight for their candidates and go out there and make sure their voice is heard on February 3rd. So for people who are looking for answers on these satellite caucuses, thinking, mm -hmm. gosh, I'm never going to be able to make it to a caucus, how do I learn more? Where should they be going? Mm -hmm. And what do they need to know just as a few small bullet points? Well, if they're interested in uh, uh, petitioning for a satellite caucus, caucus. Uh, they can go to our website, iowademocrats.org, and click in the caucus section, and there will be uh, some information about satellite caucuses, including a, a draft application form that they can use to fill out to submit to us. They need to have it into us by, um, sept or by November uh, 18th, uh, and then our committee will review that and have decisions made by mid-December. And so how many satellite caucuses are you anticipating there be? You know, this is the first time we've done it. And right? so we, uh, at this scale. And so we don't know, um, but we're prepared and we've got a great team in place and we're expanding our team right now to make sure that we can handle whatever additional capacity is needed for these sites, as well as to make sure that all of our in-precinct caucus sites are as accessible as possible. Rides and uh, ADA accessibility is uh, met uh, and many other pieces to make sure that everyone who goes to our caucus has a tremendous experience. So can you just, we have about a minute and a half left, so real quickly just give us a quick, what is a satellite caucus and how does it differ from a regular caucus? Uh, a satellite caucus is basically just an additional caucus site and it's designed to capture those people who could not otherwise make it to their precinct caucuses. It's going to have a similar feel to their precinct caucuses. They're going to stand in corners, they're going to stand behind their candidate, they're going to be able to realign. Uh, they're going to be apportioning what we're called county delegate equivalents, which is similar to what happens at a precinct caucus. Um, and so it's going to have a similar feel. You're even going to be able to submit platform planks and, uh, uh, you know, indicate whether they want to go to the county convention. And so it's going to be a great, uh, great opportunity to capture those who maybe because of work or maybe because of mobility issues or maybe because they're out of the state or out of the country, give folks an opportunity to participate in our caucuses. And so then each congressional district will then have a kind of a mm -hmm. ghost county that all of these satellite locations feed into, right? Yep, that's exactly right. So we set it up similar to how we did the virtual caucus, mm -hmm. which is we were creating four, uh, four absentee counties, if you will. And so that's what we're doing here again. And the, just the satellite caucuses will feed right into that. Wonderful, Troy. As always, we really yeah, appreciate no, you being thank here. thank you so much. Good luck with everything. Oh. I know how busy you are. <laughs> I always say that. We'll take a short break, but up next, we sit down with Senator Elizabeth Warren. Local 5 celebrates the talent of Iowans by supporting events like the IMT Des Moines Marathon. Yeah, it's really just, you know, it's among the best of the best. Thanks for joining us and cheering on these athletes. And congrats to everyone who raced. Thank you. Local 5 shares the stories of our community because we are Iowa. I know people love the dish remote. It's great. So why build in a Google Assistant? I mean, who really needs a T 
TV remote that can turn the thermostat up. Change temperature to 72. The lights down. Lights. And still access their DVR. Play video. Actually, some people could absolutely use a remote like that. The new Dish Voice Remote. Dish, tuned in to you. Hello, I'm Jack Hatch. I'm a builder of affordable housing and a former state senator. Why am I running? I wrote the largest environmental cleanup program protecting your water. Frank County was willing to give away control of our waterworks. I took guns away from those convicted of domestic violence. Frank County voted to delay action on assault weapons. Our roads are a mess and our taxes have gone up. I'm sick of it. Time for a change. I'm Jack, and with your support, we can get Des Moines back on track. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call now. Senator Elizabeth Warren is the perceived frontrunner in Iowa right now, making her the target for attacks from opponents. We sat down to talk about whether that rise has changed her campaign. Hasn't changed it at all. So when I first got in to this race, mm -hmm. for me, it was just this incredible honor and opportunity to get out and talk to people about what's broken, how to fix it, and to start to build a grassroots movement to make it happen. Uh, to talk about why this country works great for a thinner and thinner slice at the top and is not working for much of anyone else, and how 2020 is our chance to change that. That's what I've been doing all across Iowa and all around the country, and you know, there are a lot of people who hear it and say, yeah, and say, I'm gonna help you in this, and I love it. I was there at the Iowa State Fair right after uh -huh. you got, after, uh, got off the soapbox, and I don't know, I mean, I know you interact with thousands of people every day, but you came out, and there was a young girl who came up to you with the Constitution in her hand, mm -hmm. and she had already had, I believe, Senator Harris signed it mm -hmm. right before you did, but she wanted you to sign her Constitution because she saw herself in you as someone who was trying to be president. So what does that mean for you as you are traveling and speaking to so many Iowans that I mean that's an impactful thing to be representing it is and uh, one of the one of the things you may know that I do is I I always stay and do selfies yes. and the selfie line in many ways is the heart of it because it's not only a chance for someone to take my hand and to say I had great insurance but when I got really sick, they cut me out, and now I've got $100,000 in medical debt. Or I'm struggling with student loans. I need help on this. Or I'm worried about the climate. Or just you give me hope that we can make this better. But one of the best parts of the selfie lines are the little girls. So whenever I see a little girl coming through the line, I'll get down on one knee. And I'll say, I'll ask her name, and then I say, my name is Elizabeth, and I'm running for president, because that's what girls do. And then we do pinky promises to remember. You are rising in the polls, and you are seeing a lot of support, but there are also people who have said, I can never vote for Donald Trump, but I can't vote for a progressive like Elizabeth Warren or Bernie Sanders. And some of those people are the more moderates or the Republicans who have said, just because I can't vote for Trump, I just won't vote. Or because I can't vote for Warren and I'm a Democrat, I just won't vote if that is who's on the t top of the ticket. So what is your response to those people and how do you bring them along with you? you know, I've been to 27 different states and Puerto Rico. I haven't just gone to Democratic places. I've gone to Republican places. I've gone to places that are different from each other. Um, I had a terrific event uh, in Kermit, West Virginia, that proudly calls itself the reddest of the red. And I met people where they are. We started out there talking about the opioid crisis. And uh, by the time it was over, 
we were doing hugs and selfies. Um, I was born and raised in Oklahoma. My brothers, two out of three, are still Republicans. But there's a lot we believe in together. Um, a lot we care about. We share a lot of the same values. When I get out and talk on the stump, I rarely talk about Donald Trump. What I mostly talk about is the kind of America we can build together. I believe in that America, and I believe that people of good faith can build it. We are in the insurance capital of America, mm -hmm. in Iowa. People love their insurance. People's livelihoods are their are private insurance. Is people work for private insurance companies. Why not allow people to keep their private insurance if they like it, mm -hmm. but if they need the public option, give them the public option? Because that could save the country money, too, to save taxpayers money. Well, that's an interesting question about whose money actually gets saved there. Do keep in mind that the health insurance companies last year sucked about $27 billion out of health care treatment. And you know how they made those profits? Every single dollar was made by saying no. No to coverage, no to treatment. Raising the deductible, raising the premiums, uh, increasing the copay, saying sorry that doctor's now out of network, uh, that prescription drug is not covered. That's how they've made that money. And what I'm really worried about is in America where the health insurance companies cover everybody who's healthy for as long as they're healthy and then if they get sick then they get pushed out of the system. We can't run a health care system like that. The cheapest way for us to provide health care is through Medicare. That's, those are just the facts. The question is how we get there, how we do it, how we pay for it, all those are very important. A big thank you to Senator Warren for taking the time to chat. We sit down with the Speaker-elect of the Iowa House next. The holiday shopping event of the season. The Des Moines Holiday Boutique, November 1st through 3rd at the Iowa Event Center. Shop hundreds of booths and find the latest trends in apparel, decor, seasonal gifts, and more. Enjoy music, shopping, and holiday fun all three days of the show. Plus, don't miss Artisan Avenue for unique finds and more. For one-of-a-kind gifts for everyone on your list, shop the Holiday Boutique, November 1st through 3rd. Buy tickets online and save at DesMoinesHolidayBoutique.com. Presented by Mercy One Comfort Health Center for Women. I started a tiny investment firm in 1986 and grew it to $36 billion. In 2010, I signed the Giving Pledge to fund good causes. Then I left my business to combat climate change, fix our democracy, and hold President Trump accountable. Last year, we ran the largest youth voter mobilization in history, helping double turnout and win back the House. I'm Tom Steyer, and I approve this message. Let's make change happen. Veterans owned and operated, and is proud to honor our heroes this Veterans Day. I'm not in Kansas anymore. Are you a good witch or a bad witch? You represent the lollipop guild? You have no power here. Now be gone before someone drops a house on you. Follow the yellow brick road. Oh, I don't care. Because, 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 because. Oh, I don't care. I'll get him for this. And his little dog, too. There is a new place. And for great TV, there's no place like Cozy TV. You're watching This Week in Iowa, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Iowa. Former Appropriations Chair Representative Pat Grassley is Speaker-Select of the Iowa House. He says as Speaker, he wants to handle the Republican caucus like he handled the budget. The leader has to come up with a proposal. So, for example, I would come up with a budget proposal, take it to the caucus, get their input and feedback. 
Um, surprisingly, not every idea was perfect, and it was good to hear that feedback, and they would definitely share it, and then try to figure out not only how you're going to get 51 votes, but how we can improve legislation, and that's really what's good about the process that we have, and a lot of people think that, you know, whoever's the speaker is going to tell the caucus, this is how it's going to be, or we're going to do this, but in our caucus, so much of the decisions that we make come from the members. We try to bring proposals as leadership because there's that expectation, but um, we're constantly trying to modify because not only do you have to have 51 members like I said you have to make sure that the caucus as a whole is comfortable with what we're doing. One issue that has been very big in the legislature um, especially from a standpoint of advocates coming to the state house and trying to lobby uh, representatives and senators is medical marijuana and that was an issue that uh, Speaker Upmeyer wasn't necessarily 100% on board with. She didn't like the proposals that came from uh, from the Senate. Mm -hmm. How do you align, who do you align with on those issues? Well, I can tell you, and this is, this is similar to what I answered with earlier and how I, my, what I would consider to be like my leadership style. At the end of the day, I'm going to have to have an opinion on things clearly. I mean, if for nothing else, I'm one of the 100 votes in the, in the body. But it's going to have to be something that I know that the caucus uh, is comfortable with, whatever the issue would be. So I'm not necessarily answering that specific question, but I'm just telling you kind of what I expect. On an issue like that, if our caucus reaches some consensus, I don't see a lot of issues that could come before the legislature that I'm going to be the one that says, no, we will or will not do this. Now, there's going to be issues as a leader where you have to do that. I recognize that. But I don't want my style to be for our caucus that I'm going to come before them and say, just because I voted one way or another on something in the past. When you've been here for 14 years, you voted on a lot of issues. And just because I voted one way or another doesn't mean I'm going to dictate to the entire caucus on how they're going to vote and what they need to advocate for. Now, Majority Leader Matt Winchito, yep. um, he does have some more um, conservative viewpoints, especially considering Second Amendment rights, um, that have stirred up quite a bit of mm -hmm. conversation yep. um, among many Iowans. Yep. Do you, how do you see yourself working with Representative Winchito in being kind of those top two leaders in the Republican yep. Party? Uh, uh, Leader Winchell and I were actually elected at the same time, same year. Uh, he, he won't like me saying this, but he's the only reason I've never been the youngest member in this body. <laughs> <laughs> so he's always he's six months younger than me, so I've never been the youngest. And uh, But that being said, I think that, um, and, and, and him and I will talk more about this, and we've had some conversations about this, but this is just so new happening. Right. We haven't sat down and ironed everything out. But that being said, we both weren't, neither one of us were elected because of one specific issue. Um, Clearly, I mean, no one would say that Matt Winchell is not pro-Second Amendment, and I think him being elected shows that our caucus is pro-Second Amendment, but I don't think that was why he was elected. He was elected because he's a good leader, he's very organized, and can lead our caucus on a daily basis in this chamber. So I would say that that is really what I see in his leadership style. Him and I working together, I think that'll, that'll work very well. Uh, so your grandfather yep. is Chuck Grassley. He's yep. a U.S. Senator. Talk to me about the legacy that your family is leaving in our state. Uh, what is how impactful is that to you? That does is that lost on you? I think that so. The way I'll answer this question is because when I think about people, people hate when I say this. When I think about my grandpa, everybody says, "Well, that, you, he's the senator. You got to call him the senator." Well, I'm going to call him grandpa. When I talk about when I think about my grandpa, it really is the legacy that he's left. Isn't that his grandson is. Uh, going to be the next speaker of the Iowa House. I think the legacy that he's left on Iowa is there's a reason why there's a 99 Grassley tour. It's called the full Grassley. Everyone that's going to run for statewide office, for president, whatever it is, knows that you better be out there listening to your constituents, be available, be willing to answer the tough questions. And so I would say the legacy that, that my grandfather has, has and continues to show Iowans is that representative government works. Both sides need to participate. Constituents need to tell uh, their elected officials what to do, and you need to be available for them uh, so they know where you stand on issues. And I think I look at that as not only for myself, but for anyone that holds office in Iowa. He set a bar pretty high for all of us, especially if you think you're running for statewide office. You better be ready to go to every single county every year, which I think is good because Iowa's a pretty big state, 99 counties, and you need to be out there in every one of those because issues are different across the state. Coming up next, the head of the World Food Prize is stepping down after 20 years, what he's most proud of. No matter what you do, you're always raising the bar.
Delaro fungicide for corn and soybeans can help you get the edge you're looking for. Delaro has a broader spectrum of disease control and best-in-class dual motive action residual. Plus, it improves plant health, so your top-performing hybrids and varieties will have the protection they need to help you achieve your personal best yields. Delaro fungicide from Bayer. Keep raising the bar. Americans are tired of having a whiner in the White House. I'm Amy Klobuchar. As president, I won't govern by tweet. I'll lead with an optimistic economic agenda for all Americans. Rebuilding our infrastructure, lowering the cost of prescription drugs, investing in rural America. I have a proven record of getting things done. Together we can move forward because what unites us is so much stronger than what divides us. That's why I approve this message. The Dish voice remote just got even more powerful. Uh, Why'd we put so much technology in there? You don't think I've watched a lot of football? You want to put a little wager on it? Bet. So you can settle that bet without ever taking your eyes off the game. How many D1 football teams are there? Oh! What you do with that power? Oh, it's gotta hurt. Well, that Woo, is friend. totally up to you. Don't look so sad, man. Come on, we're having fun. New Dish voice remote with the Google Assistant. Dish, tuned in to you. This Week in Iowa, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Iowa. Welcome back, everyone. We are joined now by Ambassador Kenneth Quinn, who is the president of the World Food Prize, but outgoing president, stepping down after leading the organization for 20 years. But you've done so much more than just lead the World Food Prize. You were the ambassador to Cambodia. You were with the State Department for decades. But to get started, tell me, how much has the world changed in the last 20 years as you've been at the helm wow. of the World Food Prize? Well, at the World Food Prize. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I think it's clear that in that 20 years, China has emerged on the scene as a, the other really significant country in the world. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Soviet Union had collapsed. The U.S. was sort of the lone superpower, and we're still the most powerful country in the world. But China, and I've been to China four times this year, is now this stunning, transformed, modern economic entity, modern agricultural entity, and playing this huge role in the world. And U.S.-Chinese relations are a key to the future. Well, gosh, that can open a can of worms of a political conversation. Yeah. but. We won't do that. Instead, okay. I just want to know what the World Food Prize has been able to do in your time in feeding the world and ensuring that people understand how many hungry people there really are. Well, number one, we put the issue of global food security front and center. You know, when I started, there were no conferences anywhere about global food security, about global agriculture. Now people understand that the single greatest challenge human beings, our species, has ever faced is can we feed 9 to 10 billion people nutritiously and sustainably, and they're going to be on our planet by 2046 when Iowa celebrates its 200th uh, anniversary as a state. So that is so big to do that. Number two is that science is the key. Norman Borlaug, our founder, was a believer in science, that we have to invest in the science and do the research. And number three, agriculture is a key to peace. That bringing people together to confront hunger can bring people together across the biggest differences. 2012, our laureate was an Israeli Jewish irrigation pioneer nominated by three Muslim scientists from three Muslim and Arab countries and in the Iowa State Capitol. <laughs> the Secretary General yeah. of the UN is here and in the front row, an Israeli diplomat, Princess Haya bint Al Hussein, the daughter of King Hussein, sheikhs from Qatar and all sorts of Christians and Hindus and Buddhists and secularists all cheering 
for this achievement. What has it been like for you to see all of these world powers coming together under something that you are so passionate about? Oh, gosh. Uh, you know, when I started, I had one employee. Maybe 25 people from outside Iowa came to the World Food Prize. Yeah. And now to have presidents and ministers come here, research scientists, smallholder farmers from across Africa. Oh, oh my God. It's a dream come true. I never imagined I'd have an opportunity like this to do something so deeply meaningful in food security and agriculture. You know, I'm a city kid from Dubuque. <laughs> Farming was hard work. I tried to avoid it. I wanted to be a diplomat in <laughs> London or Paris, you know. And Which you succeeded in being a diplomat. But yeah, but I, go, but I wanted to go to fancy parties, mm -hmm. and instead I got sent to developing countries right. and Vietnam in the middle of the war. And that'll change your world, and that's where you met your wife. Okay, very quickly, we only have 30 seconds left, but please, what is your next step? Wow, I'm going to uh, write. I've got a lot of things I want to get down. I've got some books. I've got some lessons to share. I still want to travel. And I want to inspire the next generation of young students to play their role in confronting hunger. Thank you for sharing your story with us. You are an inspiration. Oh, thanks for having me in, Sabrina. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. The Culligan High Efficiency Water Softener is the world's best. It's backed by the industry's strongest warranty and serviced by the world's largest local dealer network. Click or call Culligan Water and start saving today. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call 855-459-0703. That's 855-459-0703. 855-459-0703. That's 855-459-0703. How much is your life worth? Liberals in Congress are pushing a socialist plan to put government in control of prescription drug prices, radically changing Medicare seniors depend on. In other countries with socialist health care, patients wait months or years for vital treatments. Life-saving drugs aren't available because government decides which treatments are worth the cost. Tell Congresswoman Cindy Axney, stop the socialist takeover of your prescription drug benefits. From intermittent fasting to cleanse fasting, now dopamine fasting. We have the real deal. Our dopamine system is being overstimulated, and that can have a real impact. New Doctors, Monday at 3 on Local 5. Thank you so much for joining us here on This Week in Iowa. And don't forget, if you don't get to catch us live on television, you can always listen to us in podcast form. We are available on all platforms. All you have to search is This Week in Iowa. Again, thank you so much for joining us here on This Week in Iowa. We hope to see you again next Sunday. Have a great weekend, everyone.